morning guys, how's it going? As you might be aware, I absolutely adore travelling. It's one of my most favourite things to do, it's one of my biggest passions. And I also like to look at travel videos, kind of to give me ideas and just to be envious of what other people are currently doing. One of the travel videos that I've recently watched is one by the Vega Brothers, or Varga Brothers, I can't quite remember. But it's a great video and it's about free things to do in London, and of course, I love London, of course I do. But when I was watching it, it was kind of all museums and galleries and things. And you know, I love culture as much as the next person, honestly I do. But, if I had to do it for a whole week of just going to free museums and portrait galleries and stuff, I think I might poke my eyes out. So I've compiled this list of 10 things, and it's actually more than 10 things, but I've kind of put them in 10 categories of really cheap, on a budget things you can do while in London so that you don't have to have a super expensive trip because yes, London can be expensive. Let's get started. So the first thing is going to be Museums and galleries, yes, you can definitely do that, and it is usually free to go and do these things. So, if that interests you, at least go and see one. I would suggest the Natural History Museum because it's my favourite. Number two, the London Eye is incredibly overrated. I know it's a favourite with tourists and it's just one of the most iconic images of London, but to be honest, it's quite expensive for a ticket to then be put in a glass pod and revolve around this thing for 45 minutes. I mean, by the 10th minute, it's kind of boring. You're looking at the same view all the way around. So instead, if you would like to do something a bit different, you can do the Shard, I think it's about 25 pounds. But if you'd like to go even cheaper, there is another option for you. The Monument to the Great Fire of London is a great place for a bird's eye view photo of London, and it's in the businessy district in the Tower Hill kind of area, and you just poke your camera through the wire mesh so you don't get this like warped glass effect that you do on your pictures when you're in the London Eye. And it's really great and it's only three, no it's four pounds now, it's four pounds, I mean what a bargain. The only thing is that I don't think there's any disabled access, it is a spiral staircase all the way up so as long as you're okay with stairs, you're good to go. I'm afraid of spiral staircases and it was at a time where I was like, you know what, maybe I've made this fear up. So I got halfway up it and just about had a panic attack, but it was worth it. It really was, I just spent a long time at the top recovering. Number three, the scenes and sights of famous figures, fictional and non-fictional. So there's lots in London, but London is like a big basis for a lot of fiction, obviously, and probably one of the most well-known, Harry Potter. Yes, you can go to King's Cross, they've got this thing set up so that you can pretend to push a trolley through a wall, which isn't platform nine or three quarters at all, but you know, it looks pretty good. There are other sites around London as well. The Grimwald Place, where the uh, Order of the Phoenix headquarters is, that is an actual site, so you can go to it. Shakespeare's Globe, obviously Shakespeare was a real person, and you can go to his globe. It has been rebuilt, it's not the original, but it's beautiful. You don't have to go in it, you can just take a really good picture and then go to the pub next door. Sherlock Holmes, you can go to Baker Street, you can take a picture of his house. I'm not sure how much it is to get in. You can go in there, go into the museum. The gift shop is free to go into or just take a picture on the outside. And of course Abbey Road, the crosswalk made famous by the Beatles album, is right there, it's free and yes there might be a little bit of a queue because it is a popular thing to do. The people who are taking photos are not official, so just hand them your camera, do it yourself and then have them take your picture. Pretty good. Number four, the markets. There are so many markets in London. You've got Portobello Market and you've got Borough Market and just so many, it's wonderful. Covent Garden, there's a market there. It's really beautiful, very popular place. Lots of YouTubers seem to feature it, probably because the Apple Store is there. Probably my favorite market actually to go to is Camden Market. There's a little thing here. Camden Market is just amazing. It's punk and rock and alternative and vintage and it's just, it's brilliant. There's a food side to it so you can get food from just all over the world. It's pretty much got everything. And the rest of the market is like vintage coats and suitcases and records and jewellery and clothes and all this amazing, amazing stuff. And Cyberdog is there. If you're on a computer right now, open a new tab and put in Cyberdog London. Seriously, it's just the, it's the most thing ever. To give you a bit of a clue, instead of mannequins to display their clothes, they use cyborgs. Yep. Number five, Harrods. I love Harrods. It's one of my main stops every time I go there. I don't even buy anything. I just love what it looks like. I love the food halls. I love to explore. I often go there trying to find the most expensive thing I can possibly find because it's got some pretty expensive things in there. The best time to go is obviously at Christmas, but if you miss Christmas, it's still a great, interesting place to go to. Number six, the pubs. Of course, London is full of pubs. It's got some seriously old ones as well. If you go to the Nell Gwynn, I swear, 
It's like the oldest, tiniest pub you will ever see. There's also a pub in Common Garden, I think it's pretty near Nando's if that gives you any bearings when you're there, but it has like a hundred beers from all over the world on draft. Like. They, the pubs are awesome. Number seven, the West End. I think it's West End in London, isn't it? One of the most fun and entertaining things you can do in London is to go and see a show. Obviously, it's a really popular thing to do. It doesn't have to be incredibly expensive either. If you go to Leicester Square, especially, they've got lots of booths set up where people have returned tickets which they're not gonna use, and so they'll sell it to you for half price. Number eight, I call it the boardwalk. I'm not entirely sure what it actually is called, but basically it's the walk right by the Thames. Obviously, you know, the Thames is this mound of grey water, to be honest, but you get to see a lot of great sights from there, lots of photo opportunities. And as well, if you are near-ish the London Eye, there's always something that's going on. From something simple like the secondhand bookstore, there are also like art pieces that might be there, there could be stalls, there are those street performers, there's usually a lot of stuff and there's also a Christmas market there during the Christmas period. Number nine, the big sites. You've got to go and see them. I mean, you're in London, let's go and do it. Buckingham Palace, Trafalgar Square, Big Ben, all of these big things, it's free to go and take photos of it. So you might as well go. It's part of British culture can't miss it. And lesson number 10, find out what is going on currently in London. London is obviously huge and vibrant and things are happening all the time. So definitely just Google, really, it's so simple. You just need to Google and find out what's going on. Over Christmas, they had this winter wonderland set up. There's often Hyde Park concerts and just lots and lots of exciting things to do. So don't miss out on the live stuff because they might be cheap or even free. And finally, a little extra tip for you, a lot of stuff is two for one in London. A lot of the big main stuff that tourists always want to do. So go for two for one London, you can just Google that or it might actually be the direct website address, two for one London, and find out what tickets there are that you would be interested in. If you're with somebody else, two for one, buy one, get one free tickets. Brilliant. If you've ever been to London, please let me know what kind of things that you have enjoyed doing there because I love London. I used to be very afraid of it when I was a child, but now I really enjoy it. It's one of my favorite things to do whenever I go back to England. Or if you're going to London, hopefully something on this list has helped you, but what are you looking forward to doing? If you enjoyed this video, hopefully you'll give me a big thumbs up to let me know so that in future I know that you like these travel how-to videos. Take care guys, have a great week, and I'll see you again soon.